over the back of the tongue. She's going to spit this one out. There she is. The screen's gone black. That's fine. We'll just start it. I'll cut it as if it never edit, happened. Edit. Imagine edit. The most common reason people in our practice, our clients, give boluses is normally for a trace element boost, a trace element supplement. Trace element deficiencies can often present in quite diffuse, non-specific ways. Clinical disease, so disease is obvious in presenting with clinical signs, is often just the tip of the iceberg. So if you have an animal presenting with a clinical deficiency, it might be another five or another 10 who are suffering with subclinical deficiency. So for those other five or 10, there's probably things being affected such as growth rate, fertility, milk yield, uh, and so on. So trace element status is something that's very specific to farms because of their individual production systems, the mineral content of the ground, the sort of feed they're providing on top of that. In the UK, typically, if farms are deficient, often it's in either cobalt, copper, selenium, or iodine. Sometimes people have issues with iron, sulfur, manganese, and these things can all interplay with each other. So copper especially can be locked up so you could have an adequate amount in the ration, but other things such as iron or sulfur can interfere with the animal's ability to absorb it. There are also boluses for different types of minerals, things like magnesium and calcium, which aren't technically trace elements because they're needed in greater quantities but the idea is the same you're providing a supplement to correct a deficiency uh, there's even boluses with something called biotin in it you might be familiar with biotin it's a, a b vitamin which helps with hoof health in cattle so if you're deficient in biotin often that can predispose to lameness issues we actually have some of our clients now starting to use these biotin boluses in bulls they'll reduce the chance of that bull going lame, which obviously means then he can't work, which is an issue. Now, before you use any supplement, you should know that there's a deficiency there. And at some point we'll do a video on working out whether there is a deficiency in your livestock at certain times of year. Assuming you've got some evidence that there are deficiencies of one or more trace elements, then boluses are one of the options. I can't emphasize enough before you give any animal any supplementation. And this applies to you and your health as well. Don't assume there's a deficiency. Go and talk to someone who knows. Ideally do some lab tests to confirm um, because overdoing it can be as bad as underdoing it. We know when we overdose cattle with iodine that their calves can suffer because it interferes with the process of transferring immunity from cow to calf interferes with passive transfer. Certainly, why would you go to the expense, the hassle, the time, the stress of bolusing, injecting, drenching an animal when you don't need to? Pros of boluses are that generally they're a good slow release source of trace elements, although not all products are equal. And certainly trace element nutritional products are not regulated in the same way that medicines are. So medicines have to undergo very rigorous testing before they can get a license um, and they can make claims about how effective they are. It's a little bit of a dark art and a dark market. If you've got any doubts, I would always speak to your vet or a qualified nutritionist before going to the trouble and expense of giving any supplement, certainly a bolus. And I suppose the cons of boluses are, they tend to be a little bit more expensive than a, say a drench, but they last longer and they are slightly more tricky to give. So you're a farmer, you've had your suspicions about trace element deficiencies, you've confirmed it using some some sort of test and you've decided that boluses are the right way to go. Assuming you've reached that point, I'll give you an idea of how we give them. Depending on what type you buy, they might contain iodine, they might contain selenium, they might contain copper, they might contain cobalt. Again, it's critical that you pick the right type for the deficiencies present in your cows and on your farm. A lot of our clients, when they're giving a trace element bolus once they've identified a deficiency, would give it around about a month or a few weeks pre-calving. They typically last about six months. Again, that varies a lot with 
the particular deficiencies on the farm and also the type of bolus. So always go and check with someone who knows better which bolus is most appropriate for the farm. As I say, it tends to be about six months. So if you bolus in pre-calving, you cover the two critical periods, which is calving. So the cows generally cleanse better. That means they shed their placenta better. The cows tend to have more vigorous calves if there was a deficiency there previously. And because it lasts six months, it normally covers them into the bulling period, the mating period. So that tends to be the other time when poor trace element status, trace element deficiency can impair production because it reduces the likelihood of that cow getting back in calf. So if you give it around about a month pre-calving, that six months will cover the calving period and the bulling period, the mating period. Mostly this is something our farmers do themselves, but sometimes when I'm on farm anyway, uh, I'll offer to do it for them because I'm there and it's good exercise. So a key thing is most boluses want to be warmed before they are introduced. It just helps with stopping the animals spitting them back out. This is what I use when I'm going out on farm to give mineral boluses. So this big polystyrene box, um, you could use anything really, you could use a cardboard box and use some bubble wrap for insulation, whatever you've got to hand. Um, a beer cooler and got hot water here acting as our source of heat. Got a couple of those and then you've got your boluses. So it's that straightforward and having them warm just means they're less likely to be spat out by the cattle. So it's always a good idea to check the gun. Remember, guns typically aren't universal. They're more specific to the brand of bolus you're using. So don't try and force one um, type of bolus in with a different branded gun it's using a square key for a round hole. That's enough from HQ. Let's go on farm and I'll show you how I do it. This is a mineral bolus. So bolus just means like a lump. Uh, and in this case, it's a lump of mineral. Looks like a big sweetie, really. And what happens is when that goes down into the esophagus, it goes down into the stomach and it will sit in one of the stomach compartments of the cow. It does the same for sheep as well. And it will very, very slowly break down. And as it's breaking down, it will release the minerals it has in it. The key thing is when you're giving these is not to cause any damage. Remember, first rule of veterinary medicine and should be a farming is do no harm. So I'll show you in a second how we give them. For this particular type of bolus, mature cows get two. We load them into our gun. Just like that. And you make sure the top is screwed on because the top is separate and sometimes if that's a bit loose, you can lose that, which is bad news. That's a phone call to the vet, that job. Right, so what I tend to find, I'm right-handed. So if I use my left hand to restrain the cow, head here, arm in front of the pole of the cow, because that pole, if it comes up, then can't smack you in the face. And I use my fingers and I get just in the gums between the incisors of the front teeth and between the cheek teeth, in that little gap there, open that up, slide it down the side, over the back of the tongue, and press the button, or press the handle, the trigger. I'll show you in real life. So they do resent it slightly, as anyone would, but the key thing is you're not using a lot of force. It's all about technique. Just over the back of the tongue, press the trigger, hold the head up for a second. They tend to hold their lip up like that in disgust for a couple of seconds, and that's that. So you're not ramming and forcing it. Um, you can use a head scoop. I tend to find those get in the way more than anything. But yeah, just nice and gentle slide over the back of the tongue. That way we're not forcing it, we're not causing any back damage to the back of the cow's mouth. We're not sending it down the windpipe. Uh, which would cause us a choke and it's as easy as that really and then once you've done that the cow's got about six months cover depending on the bolus for various trace elements which will help her with uh, calving it help the vigor of the calf and also her fertility when it comes to bulling in the summer nice one the absolute best thing you could do is go back however many months or weeks later 
depending on the supplement you're using, resample any deficient animals and check that the supplement is doing what it says on the tin, that it's correcting that deficiency for as long as it says it should. And certainly if you work with your vets, if you work with the manufacturers of the supplements, they can often be very cooperative, especially if it's your first time using it or you have your doubts, they can be very helpful in you know, validating those results, checking it's doing what it says on the label.